The Mixer Brush and Affinity Photo adds some cool physics to your brush strokes. Whether it's pushing paint around or mixing colors, you can get some interesting effects with this tool. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and today we're talking about the Paint Mixer Brush and Affinity Photo. Now to appreciate what the Paint Mixer Brush does, let's just do a brief review of how the normal paint brush works. And of course, that's this tool right here, Paint Brush Tool. So I'll use one of the standard brushes here. I'll choose acrylics and I'll just use this matte acrylic 01. And let's choose a color, I'll choose red. And what I can do is I can make a sphere here. I'm painting it on a pixel layer, by the way, nothing special about it. And then I'll change my color to blue. And I'll paint another sphere here. And you can see I'm just painting over the existing colors. Now, what if we want these colors to mix and interact with each other? Well, that's where we use the paint mixer brush. And that's this tool here. So I'll switch to that tool. And then I'll go and I'll select the acrylic brush again, acrylic matte acrylic 01. And I'll select my blue color here and I can make a sphere. So far, it doesn't look too different. But the cool thing now is what happens when I switch to the red color. So let's go red and I'll start painting here. And what you can see is that the colors are actually mixing with each other. Not only that, but the colors are kind of pushing each other around. And now that I've mixed this new color, if I draw another sphere over here, that color is actually now on my brush. Now it helps to think of the paint mixer brush as if it's behaving like a real brush with bristles on it. If you've ever done real world painting, you know that when you paint with a brush, it's gonna pick up some of that paint that's on your canvas and it's gonna mix with the colors in your brush and it's gonna change it. And that's exactly what happens with the paint mixer brush. Now the paint mixer brush is also gonna treat your brush like it's a physical object that is pushing existing paint around on your canvas. Right now I have a clean brush and I'll click and drag. You can see it's not painting anything here. I'll explain later exactly what clean brush means. But if I click and drag here, you can see it's actually pushing the paint across the canvas. So I'm holding the mouse button and I'm just dragging across here. And now if I start painting, you can see I've picked up that color. Now the paint mixer brush is gonna work with paint on the same layer. So right now I have this blue circle here. Let me create another pixel layer. I'll select this color here. And you can see I'm on a pixel layer above my circle. If I start painting, the pixel brush is not actually interacting with the color below it. However, if I go and select this blue circle layer, if I paint on it now, now it is interacting with it. So if you notice the paint mixer brush isn't actually interacting with your colors, make sure you're on the layer that you think you are. Now when the paint mixer brush is selected, you have many of the same options up here that you have for a normal brush. You have the width, the flow, you have some pressure options, and of course you can configure the brush further. But some of these other options are a little less obvious, so let's go over them. Strength determines how well your brush mixes with the paint that's already on the canvas. So I'll set this to 100%, and if I drag it across, you can see it's not really doing anything. Let's set it to 90%, and if I drag it across, now you can see it's actually mixing a bit and it's pulling it out. And if I go to something like 10%, it's hardly even going on the canvas to begin with. Next, we have the load brush and clean brush options and understanding how these work are critical for not getting frustrated with this tool. If you don't know how these things work, you're gonna be driven up the wall trying to figure out what's going on with the paint mixer brush. So let's check them out. Load brush is actually going to load the color onto your brush that you have selected over here. So I'll click load brush and I have red paint here, but as I start to mix it in, as we saw before, my paint starts to get purplish. And now if I paint again, I have that purple color on my brush. If I wanna get my brush back to that red state, I can click load brush, and now I have red again. Now you can also enable auto load brush, which will automatically reload your brush when you let up on the mouse cursor. So let's do that. So I'll paint this red in here, and you can see I'm mixing it in and I'm getting this purple color now, and I'm holding the mouse button. Now I'll let up the mouse button, and when I paint over here, I'm back to red again. This is because I had auto load brush selected, so when I let up the mouse button, it automatically cleaned off the purple and gave me my red back. So speaking of the word clean, let's see what that one does. Now clean brush is going to remove any color from your brush. So I have red here. The obvious case is if I click clean brush, now it's not doing anything, it's just empty. However, note that when your brush is clean, I'm pressing here and nothing is happening. If I do this over the paint, I can actually push the paint around a little bit and it's going to pick up that color. So now my brush does have this paint on it and it's going to be red. And of course, if I did this over the color over here, it would be this purple color. So if you don't like the color on your brush, you can press clean brush and now it's gonna be empty again. And as you may expect, auto clean brush is going to clean your brush when you let up on the mouse button. So let's try an example with auto clean brush. I have red selected. I'm gonna mix it with this paint here. Now normally we'd get purple, but I'm gonna let up on the mouse button now. 
And now when I go and try to paint over here, nothing is happening because my brush was automatically cleaned when I let up on the mouse button. So I recommend playing around with these settings a little bit if you want to learn about the paint mixer brush tool. It'll save you some frustration in the end. It's a little tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it makes your life easier. Now the paint mixer brush tool can also be used with images. In this case, you're going to have to convert the image to a raster layer. It'll automatically happen if I paint on it. Or I can right click on the image here and say rasterize. Just be sure you know the implications of rasterizing your image. You're going to be locked into your current resolution and you're not going to be able to go back to your image as it was before. So make sure you have a backup copy. And in general, using the mixer brush on your image is going to be destructive. So let me show you how that works. So if I clean my brush here, I have an empty brush. I could go and I could push around some of these clouds. Maybe I want to get rid of them. Maybe I want to auto clean my brush. There's all sorts of effects you could do here. If you want to modify the image somehow, perhaps add some distortion effects, you could do that. Maybe if you want to make something more artistic, you could go kind of add these brush strokes to it. So using the mixer brush tool to modify images is a possibility, but keep in mind that it's a destructive process. Now, if you did want to do something like remove clouds or something like that, a much better tool would be the healing brush tools or in painting brush tools. And these are available over here. So I could select the in painting brush tool. And if I want to get rid of this cloud here, I could select this area. And it's gone. If you'd like to learn more about how these healing tools work, be sure to check out my video on that subject. I'll post a link right here. And of course, if you have any questions on how the paint mixer brush tool works, be sure to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.